Most financial transactions have a digital element now, except cash, of course, and it's become critically important to verify who we are. This is done in a number of ways. We have PIN numbers, fingerprint authentication, and facial recognition is on the way. But how about behavioural biometrics? This is each person's unique rhythm of keystroke dynamics, swiping, and so on. Well, to talk about this, let's meet Howard Berg, Senior UK Vice President at Gemalto, the global leader in digital security. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Howard, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you for having me. Now, we're talking about behavioural biometrics yep. today. Now, maybe everyone hasn't heard of that phrase. So what is it and how does it help in authentication? So we're all familiar with biometrics, which can be the use of fingerprints, the use of iris scanning, or even facial recognition to identify ourselves face to face. However, there is another big world, digital, which is where we're using a mobile phone or a laptop to transact with another party. And that's where behavioural biometrics comes in. These can divide into two areas. For the individual, we start looking at how they hold the mobile, how they actually use the keystrokes on the keypad. We can get a pattern from that, and even how they use the mouse. At the same time, we look at the device itself, and we look at the IP address on the device. Do we recognize it? Is it some way trying to be hidden from us? Can we identify the location? Is that a location we expect? We then go further and we look at has the SIM in the device been in any type of transaction which might be questionable, not necessarily fraud. And from that we can build up a pattern and be able to be reasonably sure the person at the other end of that device is who we expect it to be. And there's a lot going on, but all this has to be frictionless for the actual user, doesn't it? How exactly. do you make that no, so quick? You're, you're exactly right. And the way we do this is all the interaction that's happening is happening in the background. There's no action required by you as the user and it's happening in a matter of seconds. We think about individual merchants or banks, do they have to sort of install a lot of new equipment to do this? No, it's all cloud-based. We have what we call the ESEO Assurance Hub, which is our own product and service to do this. And it uses intelligent information to actually gain a profile of you. And we bring in other partners that offer services, meaning the interaction for the bank or the merchant is very simple. And as Jamalto, we provide this service to them in a single cloud-based solution. So you don't have to have new terminals or no anything No new terminals, like nothing new at all. And there are a lot of different risk management and fraud prevention offerings on the market. How do banks or financial services companies decide which one to choose? You're quite right. And what we do as Jamalto is partner with Best in Class. So the hub word of the ESEO Assurance Hub is about combining with other companies who are specialists in their areas, be it biometric identification, be it SIM swap, where someone steals your identity through getting a copy of your SIM. And we partner with these companies to produce a solution that enables a bank to have, or a merchant, to have a single contract with Jamalto, but take the services of many, many, many solutions providers. And the next thing coming, sort of an extension of this, is bank cards actually with Indeed. the fingerprint identification yep. in them. So how's that going to work? Well, that's about moving to the next generation of authentication. So we all were used to signature for many years. We've become used to PIN. The question is what next? And we believe that's biometrics. And the biometric card has a simple pad on it where you place your finger. It takes a it looks at your fingerprint and it compares a fingerprint that's already been stored on the chip in your card. So nothing is going anywhere in terms of being sent to a third party for authentication. It's all done on the card. The card is powered by the terminal at the point of sale. No change to the point of sale. And from that, it can compare your fingerprint to the one on the card and say yes, this is the person I expect it to be. And a lot of the companies in the identity management space are startups, and you've yeah. been going 20 years or so. Is there a danger that you're sort of the old guard and that the better ideas will come from the newer disruptors? I think we hold our own, but yes, of course, there are lots of great companies out there bringing in new ideas, and the benefit of the ESEO Assurance Hub is we can incorporate those ideas and those companies into the hub and offer that service to our customers as part of the overall SEO Assurance Hub product. And how difficult is it generally for banks to stay ahead of the cyber criminals because they also have the latest technology, don't they? It is a challenge and it's something we work on and most of our customers are working on all the time. The skill is to stay one generation ahead. Every time we bring out a solution, we're looking at the next generation. As we know, there will be fraudsters, both organised and those on a more opportunistic level looking to break those solutions. As long as we stay one generation ahead, we're winning the battle. And you're thinking about the next thing coming, which is the fingerprint cards we were talking about. So when are they going to be coming in and how popular do you think they'll be? I think they'll be very popular. 
we're waiting for the first few pilots. Uh, it'd be interesting to see who wins that particular battle. But I think it's an obvious next generation from PIN. All right, well, Howard, on that note, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in global food security and the circular economy. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.